What's up everybody, this is Ryan here, and in this video I'm going to talk about integrating Firebase Auth and Google Sign-In Provider in your Android applications. So, in order to set up Firebase Authentication with Google Sign-In Provider, we will need to perform the following steps. We'll create and configure Firebase for an Android project. We'll set up a SHA-1 certificate in Android Studio for debug builds. We'll download the Google Services.json file after all the configuration is done. We'll have a quick look at what we need in our project level and module level build Gradle files. And once that's all complete, we will implement Firebase Auth and Google Sign-In Provider in a small little Android application, and I will show you where to get the source in a moment. Now before proceeding, I will need you to have an account set up with Firebase, so go ahead and do that if you haven't already. So assuming you have an Android app which you want to connect to Firebase, the easiest way to integrate it in recent versions of Android Studio is to select Tools, Firebase, Authentication, and then click Connect to Firebase. If this process worked for you, it should have created a new Android project in Firebase. If it doesn't, I suggest you enter the Firebase console and create a new Android-based project manually. Next, click the Add Firebase Authentication to your app button. This will add in some Gradle dependencies to make things a little bit easier for you. For the next step, we will set up authentication in Firebase. Go ahead and open up the Firebase console and click on the authentication page. Next, click Sign In Method. In the following tutorial, where we actually implement code for Firebase Auth, we just use Google Sign-In Provider. For your first try at this, you might want to just stick with email password authentication. Before we can do much else, we need to configure a SHA-1 certificate for our application. This is just a unique identifier which we will add to our Firebase project's configuration. To get the debug certificate, which Android Studio generates for us, simply build your project at least once, open the Gradle tab in Android Studio, and try either project name, tasks, Android, signing report, or if that doesn't show up, try app, tasks, Android, signing report. In the run console, locate your SHA-1 certificate and copy it. Back in the Firebase console, navigate to settings. Towards the bottom of the general tab, you should see a card which holds your app ID and allows you to download your Google services JSON file. On that card, click add fingerprint and paste in the debug certificate. Now, there's something very important I need to mention. I'm going to show you how to set this up using a debug SHA-1 certificate, which Android Studio automatically creates for you. So this will allow you to test debug versions of your application, but just understand that when you upload your application to Google Play, if you sign that application with a different SHA-1 certificate, which you really should do, then you're going to need to add that certificate back into Firebase as well. And also, if you're like me and you use App Signing by Google Play, you're going to want to go into the Play console, open Release Management, and then App Signing, and you're going to want to paste the public SHA-1 certificate fingerprint in the console into Firebase as well. Now that we have our certificate set up, it's time to download our Google Services JSON file. This file contains keys and configurations, which will allow our client app to work with Firebase and Google Sign-In. Now, if you downloaded this file before adding your SHA-1 certificate, you will need to download it again. All right, now that we have all that configuration done, it's time to see how we actually implement Firebase Auth and Google Sign-In Provider in the application. This will require properly configuring Gradle, implementing start sign-in flow and on activity result, which are functions in the front end, and implementing Firebase Auth in the back end of the application. Now, I will only be writing out a couple functions in an entire application, so please check the description box for the source code for the entire application. I also build this application out in many different segments in this whole tutorial series, so consider checking out the other videos if you want to know how I set up the view model, the rest of the view, and things like that. Before proceeding, please double check that in your project level build Gradle file, you have the Google repository present in the All Projects script within the build script, and also that you have a dependency to Google services in the build script as well. In your module level build Gradle file, you'll want to have at least Firebase Core, Firebase Auth, and Play Services Auth if you wish to use Google Sign-In. In this app, I chose to build a custom login UI, and if you want to learn how to do that, please watch part four of this tutorial series where I demonstrate how to build a custom material design login UI using constraint layout. All right, we need to write a couple of functions in the view. So the first one is start sign in flow. 
Start Sign-In Flow will start an external activity which will display the Google Sign-In user interface. This will briefly pause our application and open up an external application. Now, important point here, r.string.default web client ID is not something that you actually write yourself and add to your strings XML file. This is something which is generated dynamically from your Google services.json file. In older versions of Google Sign-In and Firebase, you did have to add this in yourself, but at this point, there's just less configuration you have to do. For Google Sign-In.getClient, if you're writing this in an activity, you can just type this. Since this particular login view happens to be a fragment, instead we'll just type in require activity. Like I said before, we're going to be actually starting a different application, so that's why we're creating an intent here. And whether or not the user signs in, the result will still get passed into on activity result once the user finishes the Google sign in user interface. A uh, quick point here, RC sign in is just some unique integer key. Let me just show you it really quick. Yeah, it's literally just leet. So RC sign in, which stands for request code sign in, is going to get passed into on activity result. If you are working in an application which uses on activity result for a couple different things, then you're going to want to actually check to see if RC sign in equals leet in this case. In this application, we're only working with Google Sign-In, so I don't expect it to be called in any other case. So basically what we're writing here is this is just a bunch of boilerplate code to see if the user signed in properly and also to see if we were able to get a user token from their Google account. What will happen is if we successfully get a user token, we will end up passing that to the back end of the application, and that's how we'll kind of connect both Google Sign-In and also Firebase together. But yeah, this is pretty typical boilerplate code. Now, Google Sign-In dot get signed in account from intent returns a task object, and our task object can throw an exception, so we'll just need to make sure that we're handling that somehow. Since this is a demo application, we'll just print it out to the console. The last thing we'll do is we'll actually inform the view model that on activity result has been called. Here I'm using a sealed class to kind of model that particular UI event, and I'm also creating this login result object. Let me show you what login result looks like. It's actually just a simple data class. As you can see, it holds the request code and the user token, uh, which could be null. All right, now that our view is wired up, the next thing we'll write is our implementation of Firebase Auth and Google Sign-In Provider in the back end. Now, there are a couple different ways to write this code depending on what tools you use for concurrency. Since this is a Kotlin app and I want the back end to be very decoupled from the front end, we will manage concurrency and callbacks using coroutines. So our first function here is called sign in Google user. This function takes in the ID token we collected when the user successfully signs in with their Google account. This function is used to create a new user and to log in a user which already exists, assuming they're using Google Sign-In. As I explained in my Kotlin course, an easy way to move a long-running operation into a background thread in a suspend function is to use the with context dispatchers.io coroutine builder to wrap the function body. My general goal with coroutines is to write code in direct style, which is basically a word for no callbacks. This makes code more legible and helps to avoid callback hell. So the first thing we'll do is we will request a credential from Google Auth Provider. Then we're going to try and give that credential to Firebase Auth. So Firebase Auth dot sign in with credential returns a task object, which we can add an on complete listener to. In order to keep my goal of writing code in direct style, we will create an extension function, which will wrap the callbacks using the suspend coroutine builder. So we're not actually going to write it out, but I'll just walk you through it really quickly. So we're going to be using await task completable. What that basically means is we're going to await the task, and we want to know if it completes or not, but we don't actually care about returning any particular value. In order to create this function, we simply take in a task as a parameter, and then we use the suspend coroutine builder. So the way that this works is the continuation object is how we actually call back to the call site of the function which we'll be using our extension function here. 
so what we do is uh, we just add an on complete listener to our task object and we check to see if it's successful or not. If it's successful, we just resume the execution of the call site function. Now I'm returning unit here because it doesn't actually matter what value I return. And if it fails, we call resume with exception. Let's see how that works back at the call site. So what we'll do is we'll add a try catch block to wrap that particular function call. Now, if it just resumes, then like I said before, it will just synchronously jump to the next line after await task completable. In this case, we will uh, create a result wrapper, result.build, to signify that we just want to return the function successfully. If we get an exception, we will catch that exception and throw it also in our result wrapper. All right, so we only have two other functions to write out here. So signing a user out is very easy, at least in this particular application. All I do is I just call auth.signout. Now what I'll do is I'll just add that particular call into a result wrapper. If it succeeds, it will return unit, which is basically a signal that things happened successfully, but we don't care about any particular return value. Next we have get current user. When the user opens the login screen, the first thing the app does is request the current user from this particular backend function. Now it's important to understand that I've initialized Firebase ahead of time in this class by calling firebaseauth.getInstance. Generally speaking, you will want to initialize Firebase ahead of time instead of calling it just before you call, for example, auth.currentUser. And the reason for that is if you call auth.currentUser before Firebase is properly initialized, then it will basically just return null to you no matter what happens. That's even if the user is actually signed in. So if auth.user does equal null, then we will actually just return null in the result wrapper. Otherwise, we will return a user object. Now, again, this is basically just a plain domain model, which will hold on to the UID and the display name of a user if they happen to have one. Now, the truth here is that I don't actually use the UID or the display name for anything, so I could actually just return unit here as well, and that would function perfectly fine for this application. So that's all you need to set up Firebase Auth and Google Sign-In Provider. If you found this tutorial helpful, please do me a favor and hit the like button down below. Follow us on your preferred social media networks and keep checking out the channel for more great content. Thank you for watching.